Hi, um, the year is 2014 and I'm a final year grad student at CMU. My name is Aditya Ramdas. The purpose of uh, these few set of videos is to introduce you to uh, the real analysis and functional analysis uh, basics that you might encounter in theoretical and practical machine learning. Um, this is the outline for you know the coming set of videos. I'll first talk about a motivation as to why does one even want to look at these uh, this kind of abstract math. Um, then I'll go into defining what function space is with examples. Uh, then we look at metric spaces. Again, uh, all of these will always have examples. Uh, then we define vector spaces, normed vector spaces, and finally we end with inner product spaces. So. Uh, what is the motivation behind uh, uh, all of these videos? Uh, well, if you really want to understand matrix norms, now a lot of you will be familiar with vector norms, but if you want to, want to understand matrix norms, well, you really need to understand what, uh, what a norm is, what a normed vector space is, what an inner product space is, and so on. One of the most critical inequalities we'll come across is what's called the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And again, you can't really understand where that comes from without understanding what an inner product space is in the first place. And all of these are really necessary in the end to understand a critical concept in, in machine learning called the, you know, it's not machine learning really, it's linear algebra, but it gets used everywhere in machine learning. And that's called the singular value decomposition. And it's used in uh, the matrix approximation literature, dimensionality reduction, and uh, a bunch of other places and to really get a deep understanding of what the SVD does uh, I'm going to need to introduce you know all these things like matrix norms and so on. Uh, things we will not be discussing uh, in these tutorials include uh, things like reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces or you know they're often called RKHSs um, and you again need to understand what an inner product space is uh, to understand the kernel trick. Um, then uh, even to understand you know the Fourier transform in uh, in in its full and complete depth, uh, it's a very it's actually a very universal and deep uh, concept. And to understand that, you really need to understand uh, inner product spaces. Finally, there are plenty of applications uh, in ML like uh, metric learning, where uh, you need to understand what a metric space is, what a Mahalanobis distance is, and you know then you can think about how to learn one. Great. So let's uh, dive right in. The first concept that I wanted to talk about was uh, a function space. Now, a function space is quite simple. It is just a set of functions. Each point in the space is one function. So here are some examples. Uh, so CAB is the set of all real value continuous functions on the interval A comma B. So right now I'm talking about um, functions from R to R. Okay, so all the functions from R to R that are that are defined on the interval a comma b, and uh, you know they take they're continuous on this interval that forms the set c of a comma b. And any one point in C a b is just one such function which is continuous on a b. Now uh, a more co a complicated example would be um, l one a b, and here this is just the set. Um, of functions f such that integral a to b absolute value of f of x dx is finite. In other, in other words, we also call this as L1 integrable functions. So if the integral over a comma b is finite, then that's, you know, the set of all such functions is called L1 ab. Similarly, we have another name L2 ab for the set of all square integrable functions. That's the only real uh, difference uh, from L1 AB. So L2 AB is a different set of functions. Great, so that's, uh, here. Are, those are just some examples and that's all you really need to know for now about what a function space is. Uh, we really need to understand that so that we can move on to the next idea which is a metric space. Now a metric space is a pair x comma rho where x is nothing but a space, like a function space, or a vector space as we'll see later, or any other kind of space, and rho is a metric. So this pair x comma rho is what's, what we call a vector space. Now a distance metric, this function rho we're talking about, is, is any function that satisfies the following four properties. Firstly, it needs to be 
positive a positive real number for every set of you know every pair of points in my space okay it's, so it kind of represents a distance between those points it has to satisfy commutativity right so this is just commutativity um which means row of ab must be row of ba for all a and b in your space um uh, this says that uh, the third one is just that uh, row of a comma b is uh, equal to 0 if and only if a is equal to b and you know if this is relaxed then you get something like what's called a semi metric and so on but that's uh, not important for the moment and lastly this is called the triangle inequality and uh, basically says uh, exactly what you would guess from the word triangle inequality is that the the distance from a to c has to be shorter than the distance from a to b plus the distance from b to c so if you have three points a b and c then of course ac is shorter than ab plus bc that's what it's trying to say so if a function row satisfies these four properties then it is a valid distance metric great so this was an abstract definition now let's actually look at uh, plenty of examples okay so the space of you know um, all real valued numbers so just uh, the space of reals associated with the distance mod y minus x okay this is the absolute value of you know um, you know like 5 minus 3 if x and y were 5 and 3 right so that is a metric space now i can change the space and keep the you know the distance the same so now the space is r plus which is space of positive reals and the distance metric is still the same uh, so this is a different this is a different metric space right because the space is is itself different now i can again i can keep the same um, space but i can change the distance metric that i use now this is log of y by x in, which is like log y minus log x and one can verify that that too is um, you know satisfies the properties of being a metric so clearly on the, you know the same space you can you can choose different metrics and you'd get a different metric space uh, here's a more complicated example so we know what l2 from minus infinity to infinity is i just defined it earlier it's the set of all functions such that when i integrate from minus infinity to infinity of f of x squared dx right this is l2 so i take the square and that is finite so every such function where the square integral over the entire space is finite that's the space the distance is now defined in this fashion where the distance between f1 and f2 which are both elements of the space is just integrate from minus infinity to infinity of f1 of x minus f2 of x the whole square dx and take the square root great so that's uh, a more complicated uh, metric uh, space and it's often called l2 of r to denote reals of course so that's l2 of r um here's a different one take all m cross n matrices and define a distance where the distance between x and y is the rank of y minus x if you're not familiar with rank yet that's fine i'm just trying to show that you know metric spaces can be quite general and defined on objects other than you know real numbers and functions and even matrices and so on here's an even funkier example uh it's uh the set of all strings okay so these are just uh, strings of characters and uh, the distance is the levenstein or edit distance and that is uh just uh, defined as the smallest number of character insertions deletions or substitutions that one has to make to transform one character string to another some of you might have seen this before if uh in your if you are if you did your undergrad in computer science another example familiar to computer scientists again would be where uh, the space is the set of all graphs and um uh, sorry this the space is you know in a particular uh, graph um so maybe i should Let's catch that out. So it's a particular graph, and uh, where the nodes are the points in my space, 
and uh, the distance is defined as the shortest path distance between uh, any two pair of points you know so any two points so. and so uh, that's again another valid metric space now clearly these examples are extremely varied and uh, hence you can already see that the study of metric spaces is quite general and uh, you know really reaches across a lot of domains so that's the uh, end of this introduction where we talked about uh, you know function spaces metric spaces and a motivation um, i'm now going to continue uh, with in the next video with, with vector spaces and normed vector spaces uh, especially defining what a norm is which is quite crucial